Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us, a show dedicated to bringing real help to real couples. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and together we are high-performance marriage coaches. We are cutting through the bullcrap and creating a movement of happy, healthy, badass couples all over the world. Let's go! Today's show is brought to you by Women's Group Coaching. Go to anatomyofus.com forward slash women's group coaching to learn more. And women... I want you in these groups. We meet once a week. We have weekly prompts and monthly themes. It is an absolute game changer for community building, for living the life that you want to live. And I want to see you there. You can apply at anatomyofus.com forward slash women's group coaching. I love meeting weekly with these ladies and I know that you're going to love it too. Again, visit anatomyofus.com forward slash women's group coaching and I will see you there. All right, guys, what's up? We are back again. We are part two with men, how to talk to your women. And we're doing a part two, part two, part two, because (laughs) you said you had a ton of thoughts on it. So I want you to expound upon that, drop some wisdom for the dudes, uh, kick their ass, let them know how to talk to their wives and their ladies. I like it. Um, So I think that we used this analogy last week of like the sock manufacturer (laughs) company. Uh, Basically like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Uh, Basically, you know, thinking of your marriage as a business that you Mm -hmm. co-run with someone else and that if you are not communicating with your, you know, like the CFO might be the husband and the CEO is the wife. So Mm -hmm. chief financial officer and chief executive officer, they do very different functions, but they are both top level people. They're C-suite executives, nice. right? Nice so, language. And they are a zipper merge. Yes. Like I talked about earlier. Yes. And so these are not like a one above role. They're not one is better, one is worse. They are like, we actually have to work together to make this company work. So the first part I would say of how to communicate to your wife respectfully is to understand that everything she does serves a function in the larger scheme of things of your quote unquote business. Mm-hmm. Now, Women are humans too. And sometimes they're doing things that aren't helpful. But at the ca- uh, the foundation of who they are, they're not dumb. They're not lesser. They're not, you know, I want you to think of like the bad things you've thought about me over the past. Like when we were first married, if I was doing something that you didn't think I should be doing, even mm-hmm. if it wasn't bad, like it was just against what you thought, what did you think about me? I, I thought that I just knew better. Mm-hmm. Like, to- oh, she doesn't know. So right. I know better. Why? Tell, um, just talk more about that. I think that's interesting. I, I think culturally, that's what I was trained to think up, mm-hmm. right? And of course, that goes back to family of origin of um, dismissing uh, your wife's thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and feelings and opinions and stuff like that. Right. Like, oh, well, that's just her. She's kind of crazy, but fine. We're doing it this way. Right. Kind of thing, right? So not thinking like I was better than you, but maybe at a core, that's mm-hmm. probably. And right. I think you've thought that of me too. Well, that's a fact. Cricket, cricket, cricket. Cricket, triple cricks. <laughs> uh, uh, triple but cricks. it was it was like, oh, I know better. I have like one minute more experience of that than you do. So we're going to do it my way and just discount your input in that. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of guys go sideways on that because it's like... They you, think sometimes, that's leadership. Right, they think that's leadership, but it's not. It's dictatorship. Hey, mm-hmm. I know better. We're doing it this way. Shut up kind of thing. Oligarchship. And, an oligarchy, right? An oppressive oligarch. And oftentimes, women, ladies, are the warning sign, the yeah. canary in the coal mine. Like tons of times you have said, Seth, I feel like you're a bullet train off of the tracks with no brakes, and me and the kids are in the middle, and our arms are getting pulled off. Right. right? We're and trying to hold the go, go, front go, of the kit. Yeah. yeah. Right. And times I'd be like, listen, this is what we got to do. You're crazy. I'm going to do it, right? And maybe once that's worked out or something. I don't know. (laughs) But other times when I haven't listened to that, you are the early warning signal, Mm -hmm. right? You're the tsunami, the the tsunami after the earthquake warning. Siren. Hey, go to higher ground. Mm -hmm. If you stay here, this is going to F us all up. That's kind of a funny analogy because it's like, you hear that like mm-hmm. that scary sound. You go, gosh, shut up, siren. I know. Jeez, is uh, this a test? What? <laughs> so uh. I was. When was I was in downtown Seattle and a building that I was in. Have you ever been in? And this is like different from a school alarm fire test. You know, like an actual thing went off and it was the loudest thing. Oh gosh, yeah. Whop, whop. And yeah. it's like there is no denying if you're dead, that's gonna wake you up. Yeah. Kind of thing, right? <laughs> so that signal means something. Get out of the building. Right. It doesn't matter if it's a four-alarm inferno 
Or if somebody left a pot of noodles on right. and their their apartment is filled with smoke, get out of the building, mm-hmm. right? And oftentimes guys dismiss that as I know better culturally. I'm trained that way. Hey, she's overreacting. She's being a drama queen. We're doing this my way. And then you pay the price later. Mm-hmm. Like times, and I've told this to my dude coaching clients. I'm like, your wife is saying those things for a reason, mm-hmm. not because she's a crazy bitch, lunatic. Right. For a reason, because part of her has an early warning system. Trust me. So I hunt mm-hmm. all the time when I can, right? Whenever I see a doe or a cow, a cow is a female elk. Mostly I see those, right? I always see the... Uh, <laughs> you can <laughs> you know make your thinking, sound, right? yeah. So I always see the the females first, right? And then the, the guys follow up, right? And guys are only thinking about one thing, right? And that's why they get shot, right? <laughs> but a, I've observed this. The, the does and the cows can walk and walk and walk, hear just the slightest thing and go... They stop, yeah. What is that? Like, trust me, I've stared at a doe for no less than like... I really think it was 15 minutes. I didn't move for 15 minutes and she didn't either. And we're just staring at each other, right? <laughs> and then... I, then I was camouflaged. And then she's like, okay, this isn't a threat. I guess she thought it was a tree or something. She flicked her ears and walked slowly away. Now, what does that signify to me as a hunter? She is not alarmed, no threat. She goes about her business, mm-hmm. right? And then who comes trotting up? Yeah. Big Daddy Buck. And he gets blasted, <laughs> yeah. right? So the women, guys, listen to this. When your wife says something, when she has some sort of gut instinct or something, now I'm not saying like, okay, trust her 100% of the time because you're wrong. We're all wrong, right? right? right. Uh, and that's okay. You guys have conversations about that. But if she is bringing something up over and over, Seth, you're the bullet train going off the tracks. You have no brakes. You can't do this. Like that went on for a long time, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And a long time, you're like, I'm building this. I'm doing this. You know, like, And it was really affecting our marriage negatively. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I can imagine how that would feel. That doesn't feel good. I'm going to stop that for the better of our family, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, literally, we're better emotionally, physically, Mm family-wise, everything. We're on a team now. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't me running lone wolf, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. It was a difference. So I listened to it. Guys, I implore you to listen to your wife when she's saying that stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that she's right every time. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that like maybe your anxiety is up here mm-hmm. and now, oh great, we can't do anything because you're so freaking right. anxious. Yeah. It, okay, that's a that's a different yeah. issue. The, all of this, the undergirding implication or implied thing here is women are also working on themselves. So you can't just yes. be mean all the time. You can't just be bossy all the time. You can't just be whatever. But I think one of the things I thought you were going to share in that elk story is that you see the woman, the the oh. the cow elk or whatever. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah, but be warned. This is so, a, this so is this a noise. Is a, this is another time I was elk hunting, and uh, you just you know you set up in your spot and you're there forever. And uh, this was on a trail, so I knew that they were coming through. <laughs> and these cow elk, female elk, were coming through, and they're like super attentive to most stuff, right. especially elk. They're hard to hunt, right? And so I was probably I was. It was it was only like twenty feet away, like not long, not far away, right? And I'm just still as anything. She comes walking through. A couple of them do, and then one just knew something was up, you know. And she looked at me, and we again that was like we stared at each other for the ten minutes, right? <laughs> and then she put her head up, and went, ah! <laughs> do it again, ah! <laughs> and made the most god awful noise I've ever heard. I didn't know elk made that. I've, I've since heard them. <laughs> But it was crazy. She just, I mean, like blurted out a bleat, like put her head up and went, <laughs> and that was her signal. Yeah. Hey, something's up. Right. Get the F out of here. She made that sound. All of her elk cow friends looked around and goes, oh shit, something's going down. Right. And then they all ran off. Right. <laughs> so the guys pay attention to that. Right. Because nature is smarter than we are. Right. We're a part of nature. The, the bulls around the area paid attention to that and goes, oh, Okay, something's up. The warning siren just went off. Mm-hmm. This isn't a, a a drill. Yeah, this is real. Mm-hmm. So now his his heightened his senses are heightened, and I didn't get an elk that day. Right. right, I saw a ton of them, but because she made that sound, she sounded the alarm. The canary in the coal mine. Right, boom, they all went, and they're alive now. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So and, guys, listen to your cows. <laughs> right. And I think of it. It's really weird. But when you said that, the analogy came up of like I imagine a wife like a newly married couple 
and the husband just plays video games all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm not shaming that, but I could imagine now all of a sudden the wife is like starting to about it, right? right. She's starting to have some feelings. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's an energy that she's like, wait. This, this isn't, isn't going to work. This isn't okay. Like you have, ki like you've got little kid. We have little kids together and this isn't going to work. And she knows like our, again, our, we are a part of nature. Our bodies, our cells are literally full of wisdom. They're full of centuries of knowledge. Our cells are not our brains, our cells. And so they know before we even know in our mind mm -hmm. what's going on. Right. That's why yeah. we get like, you know, you get goosebumps if something scares you. Our, our cells know. And so when women have this thing of like something's up, whether that's I think our kids need to be in a different school or whether that's I think you watch too much video games or the porn that you're watching isn't helpful for our marriage. Or I mean, think of another a millions of other ones like an example we have, which like one of our kids had like the crappiest bed frame ever because he had had it since he was like little and we kind of didn't care about it. And then I was like, you know what? That's kind of like a shitty thing for us to do as parents and be like, hey, I have this janky bed frame. But like, so you get a little bit of a like a bubbling up as a mom or a mm -hmm. wife and you go, hmm, that's not going to be helpful for him. Right. If his friends see it, I'm going to say something to my husband, my co-creator of everything, the person who, nice, the CFO, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to make a decision together about a bed to get for our kid. Right. It's not that I want to bother him and be like, I just need your money. Oh. Right. I complain about everything. Now, oh. now, what I've heard before is some people could be man or woman, husband or wife, are just looking for shit to buy because they're right. bored and they don't have anything else. Yeah, to that's do, a totally right? different story. It's like we just got a bed two weeks ago. Right. We need another one. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just bought you the car that you said you wanted, and you want to trade it in a year later. Hmm. What's up? Right. Yeah. Is there is definitely. Um, being wise about that is a whole. Right. That's a whole different thing. But I want to get to the foundation of like your wife is not talking about things that seem unimportant to you, but they're actually things that are important to the running of your, what did I say? It was the manufacturing floor thing? The sock factory. The sock factory floor manager. Yes. CEO or whatever. Um, so that's, that's one area that I thought I really wanted to kind of communicate in the first part of this. Now, the second half of this is like, so then what do we do? How do we talk? Mm -hmm. How do we talk to our wives? How do we do it? It seems so scary and weird and hard, and I just would rather say nothing. You know what I just thought of? What? Sometimes it's not an issue of, oh, how do I talk to her? It starts out with how do I listen to her? Ooh, that's a good one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She's saying all this stuff, and I don't know how to respond. Okay. Are you listening to what she's saying? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the meta meaning? Like, the thing below the thing of that. Hey, Seth, I feel like you're a bullet train of just all over. I feel like I'm pulling apart. Okay, fine. I'll just stop everything I'm doing. Is that what you want? Sit on the couch all day and just be with you? Ugh. <laughs> right? Is that what you want? No. Let me look below the thing and go, hey, in that, I, I hear that you are feeling literally pulled apart because you said you were feeling pulled apart. Right. What does that mean to you? Well, that's not sustainable. I don't like it. You're never home. And I just don't think I see it not, I seeing it being more of a detriment to the family. Mm -hmm. So what I'm asking there is some balance. Oh, are you saying that you don't appreciate me like grinding my knuckles to the bone and working and doing all this stuff? No, I didn't say that at all. Mm -hmm. You made that up. <laughs> you total weirdo. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of us have felt that way mm -hmm. yeah. because we're like, Hey, I'm kicking my ass and getting my ass kicked mm -hmm. for this, for the family. Right, so let's let's have a conversation about that. But instead of knowing exactly what to say, it's like, why don't we try to listen better and then start from there? Mm -hmm. Hey, well, okay, just be curious. Tell, so you you feel like you're being pulled apart? Tell me, like how? Mm -hmm. Like how? Because right. I don't know. Because I I am doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. and and I hear you saying that this isn't sustainable for the family. So I'm not just going to discount that and mm -hmm. go, you're crazy. I'm going back to work. Right. I'm going to say, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? What does that mean for you? Mm -hmm. Right? So if you listen, right. you know, like li and listen more, you can ask better questions. The better questions you get, the better answers you're going to get. Right. And also you can apologize for that kind of thing. It's unintentional. I didn't mean to make you feel pulled apart or whatever, but mm -hmm. man, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Like and, then, and then that also opens the door for sharing your feelings. Like, 
hey, I hear, I hear you feeling pulled apart. That's not my intention to like stress you out and feel you pulled apart. From my perspective, I know that we have bills to pay and I'm trying to build this and I want to provide, you know, our kids and mm-hmm. youth like things that I didn't have as a kid. Mm-hmm. So I'm really kicking my own ass trying to build this stuff and it's really stressing me out mm-hmm. too. It's not necessarily the life that I want to live, but I don't know what else to do. Right. Then we can have a conversation about that. Right. You know Sorry. what I'm saying? Uh, and I think too, there's an element of teamwork mm-hmm. that I want to really, really sort of drive home here as well is that a lot of women, a lot of women say that there is teamwork. They wish there was more teamwork. What? This is a short episode. Yeah. That's so stupid. I have a coaching client um, very soon. Not on the calendar. Yeah, it is. But uh, <laughs> so teamwork of. Uh, you just forgot. No, I'm trying to figure how can I wrap this up so soon? Mm hmm. I told one of the most recent, I told the person I talked about in episode one of this show, Mm -hmm. I told him part one, part one of this show. Mm -hmm. I said, I want you to talk to your wife. And I said, this is going to sound weird, but talk to her the way that her dad would talk to her. Mm. That makes sense. It's, it's like kind. And now maybe not everyone's dad is like that. So like in a, like a Hallmark movie, dad, I can see you wanting me to talk to you like your dad does. Like your dad's very, uh, he's very present, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. he's very thoughtful. Right. He's very, he's a weirdo, but (laughs) that's for sure. I love him. Uh, But but, yeah, I can see that for you. So it's, I mean, think of it. Mm -hmm. It's the most protective person ever in Mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. It's the, the foundation of what I believe as like, secure. I'm here for you. I've got you. I'm keeping you safe. Mm -hmm. I am keeping you safe. Um, And we're on the same team. Like it's the the dad, like healthy dad vibes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in a way, I think if men understood that there is an enormous element that women are looking for that piece in their husband as well. So it's the bull elk. It's the bull elk vibe of like that one there with the giant antlers is Mm -hmm. protecting me. Right. But most men approach their wife who is asking for another freaking papazon and what? She wants her nails done now and oh, she wants an, a minivan instead of a truck. Seth Studley. I, I didn't dr- buy I you a truck. a truck. I got you a minivan. I had a truck when I our, got a truck. I had to drive it. I didn't have a car. I used to drive a Ford 250 F250. That was a beast. And I had to drive it to preschool <laughs> with a newborn. That anyway. fits in with all the other Maple Valley moms. It's very funny. They're but SUVs. anyway, mm-hmm. so there's an men don't see the value, the like the beautiful blossoming energy that could be created within their marriage mm. if they could view their wives with the, like through the eyes of like she wants a strong, loving protector. Ooh, what do I want to be? a strong, loving protector. Mm -hmm. What makes me feel really good as a man to know that I'm valued and I'm protecting and providing. Okay, show and communicate those things with your wife lovingly, Mm -hmm. like life-givingly. Don't, you know, get pissed and mad and ignore her when she talks about what school the kids want to go to. That's a big freaking choice. Right. Don't put it all off on your wife. Are you happy dudes when your wife gets weird and pissed and mad when you want to have sex? Right. Does that feel good? No, it doesn't. Right. Does it feel good to like fight like you want? Like you have to fight for what you want. Don't do that to your wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got to wrap this up, girl. Hold on. So I think too at the core of this is respect. If you show respect to your, you know, executive boss at your job, but then you come home and don't show respect to your wife, you're, I mean, speak respectfully to your wife. Speak Mm -hmm. to your wife as if she has value. She does and you know it. She absolutely Speak does. that way. Right. Right. So, all right. I hope this has been helpful. Guys, hopefully you have learned something about how to talk to your wife. Get mad at Seth for the short episode. I'm mad at him. Get mad at me. Fine. We'll talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> if you want more of this, time. go to badasshusband.com to get your butt kicked, to get encouragement, to give encouragement and to get accountability and some real wisdom too. It's Let like, me okay, say one thing you too. Need, you need a cadre of dudes. You know, you're the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. BadassHusband.com to level up your life. Right. And women, men can talk to you as perfectly as pie, but if you're missing things and not doing your own journey, Which then you're messing are. up. So mm-hmm. 
go to anatomyofus.com forward slash women's group coaching and join the women's group coaching and get your ass kicked by this lady to step up your game too. Because it's not just on the men, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sorry this episode is shorter. I'm mad about it. Be mad all you want. Don't care. (laughs) Just kidding. Okay. We love you. I love you. And we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to Anatomy of Us. This podcast is produced by my mom, Melanie Studley, and hosted by my dad, Seth Studley. Our show is edited and published by our producer, Reva Hansen, from Creative Media Support. Special thanks to our Patreon members that get an extra episode every week. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.